Hey everyone, it's Jessica. I'm reviewing chapter 12 of Coercion and the Conscience and Coercion and its Fallout by Murray Sidman. In the beginning of chapter 12, Coercion and the cons Conscience, Sidman discusses the conscience and how it is not something that we can feel and is not a tangible item and that the consciousness is more of a sense that's acted upon. Sidman states that the conscious is a tendency to do the right thing when individuals are put in conflicting situations and he refers to the conscience as telling right from wrong. He then sets a tone to discuss how one comes to understand the conscience and that individuals are not born concerned for others. He poses the question, how do notions of right and wrong develop and how they turn into what he states as the development of a conscience? He then begins to introduce the subchapter, Origin of the Conscience. He begins this portion of the chapter by stating that coercive control is the root of the conscience and the punishment factors have a huge role in the development of each individual's conscience. Sidman references Freud's superego and compares it to the conscience in that they are both invented to explain why and how individuals choose to make decisions how they understand right from wrong, and how each individual develops a moral compass. Sidman references the lab rat yet again. He discusses that the rat develops a conscience and does what it needs to do, pressing the lever to obtain food. He then changes contingencies, and instead of receiving food from pressing the lever, the rat receives a shock. That rat begins to change its behavior and is fearful to press the lever, but continues to do so because it was so reinforcing prior. Cinnamon infers that the rat would begin to think it was doing the wrong thing instead of the right thing, since shocks are not desired. Cinnamon discusses similar behaviors with young children and mothers and how both of these examples reflect punishment and an approach and withdrawal of behaviors. He opens up a discussion that the conscious is developing warning signs that may result in undesired consequences thus leading into the observation that having a conscience can bring up avoidance to punishing behaviors. In the next subchapter, Conscience and Control, Sidman introduces this section by comparing in the conscience to a babysitter in that we hope that in the absence of adults, children will behave well because they have a conscience and are aware of punishers. Sidman continues to pair conscience with good behaviors and the lack of conscience with bad behaviors. He discusses childhood and teenage years as a time where boundaries are tested. And this is when punishment is utilized to build individual consciences. He begins to discuss neurosis and personality disorders and attributing them to the increase in the coercive practices that are utilized within communities. He discusses therapy and that therapists must aim to understand both problem and adaptive behaviors. He pairs religion with conscience, stating that society utilizes religion to build up and maintain the conscience. Sidman then discusses behaviors like theft, murder, and corruption, and that the conscience has not stopped behaviors like this with every individual. He continues to discuss positive reinforcers and the strength that they may have on individuals and the conscience. If reinforcers obtained from the bad behavior is greater than the following the conscience and doing the right thing, then individuals will fall to the coercive control of these reinforcers. Sidman ends this chapter by stating, life dominated by a conscience that is based on threats becomes oppressive and we need a replacement for the conscience. So my question to you is what are your thoughts on Sidman's statement? Do you think the conscience does more harm than good and should it be replaced? Please explain. Thank you. And that's my overview of chapter 12.